Hey, what's up guys? My name is Agent Psycho, and we're going to be kicking off, uh, I think the third or the fourth episode for the M14 family of reviews. We've come back to it as because um, Nexon has released yet another Gun Emporium forgeable variant for the M14 family, and this time, actually it's not the fourth episode now that I think about it, it's more like the seventh episode or something like that, but the title will say everything, so ignore my mishaps for that. So anyway, this is going to be a review on the M1 Garand Battle Rifle. This a little bit of background, brief historical background on the M1 Garand. The M1 Garand is an American-made uh, semi-automatic uh, battle rifle that was used by American forces in World War One. And because of Nexon's um, recent tradition of adding, incorporating um, World War II guns into combat arms, the M1 Garand is the next in line for that kind of tradition. So um, I really like what Nexon is doing in terms of bringing in World War II guns into combat arms. And the M1 Garand is one of the one of the um, <coughs> new additions in the Gun Emporium family. So the M1 Garand, it once again it is a battle rifle. And a little bit of background information: it is forged from the M14, the same uh, weapon that you used to forge the HR1860. So um, you can actually forge both of them, making the M14 the first weapon in common arms that is able to uh, be used to forge two different weapons in the Gun Emporium. But that's just a little bit of trivia there. The M1 Garand, like I said, it's a battle rifle, so I'm going to be comparing this to the original M14 and the Gewehr 43, which which is pretty much the German uh, counterpart of the M1 Garand uh, back in World War II. So the M1 Garand, um, first of all, let me just uh, put this out right now, the M1 Garand is a very, very potent and very powerful battle rifle. However, there are uh, there are major dis drawbacks to using the M1 Garand, but if you use it right, it can be probably the deadliest weapon you can ever, re or you can ever use in amongst the uh, Gun Emporium family. So let's get on with the um, the damage. The damage on the M1 Garand is a very very strong 54. This means that this will two shot pretty much anyone at close range. So 54 damage, very very high, very uh, what you expect out of a battle rifle. Portability wise, it's not too great because I mean it is a battle rifle. Thus, it's really really heavy, and its portability is at a meager 55, which makes this on par with guns like the AK-47, the AUG A1, even though the AUG really isn't a heavy assault rifle at all by any means, and the Gewehr 43. They're all very power. They're all very heavy because they're all uh, the Gewehr 43 and the M1 Garand in particular, and plus the M14. They are all battle rifles, so that's kind of understandable. Rate of fire, the rate of fire on the M1 Garand is at a 50, but I honestly think that it fires faster than the Gewehr 43 if you put it on fully automatic. It might be the same rate of fire as the M14, but I'm not too sure, but the M1 Garand does fire a little bit faster than the, uh, previously to, uh, the two previously mentioned battle rifles, at least in my opinion. Accuracy wise, that has a very very high accuracy at 91. This is the this makes it one of the highest uh, or the most. Well, this makes it one of the most accurate assault rifles. Technically, it's a battle rifle, but uh, ne Nexon classifies it as an assault rifle because there's no battle rifle category in combat arms. So this makes it one of the highest accuracy accuracy uh, assault rifles in combat arms, tied with the AN94 uh, TAC OP and the Ravens G36C. So very very accurate. How However, because of the fact you cannot attach a scope on the M1 Garand, it's kind of eh, it's kind of useless. But it is very easy to um, pick off targets at long range because of its amiable uh, hip fire spread. But it takes a lot of patience to do that. Recoil wise, it's, it has a very high recoil as well at 69. Burp, burp, um, but it's not as high as the Gewehr 43s. The Gewehr 43 has a 70 recoil, whereas the M1 Garand has a 69 recoil. But it's still nonetheless pretty high. Recoil spread. The recoil spread is actually pretty low for a battle rifle. In fact, um, it's lower than the Gewehr 43s or the uh, and the M14s. However, this is attributed to the fact that it only holds eight rounds per magazine, and you can't change that. Nexon has done a good job of portraying the M1 Garand uh, realistically in combat arms, in that um, you cannot attach a scope on it, you can't attach uh, magazine modifications to it, and the fact that it makes that little ping noise whenever you need to reload. So I like that historical accuracy for the win. Um, Moving on to the recoil, uh, recoil kickback, the recoil kickback is actually pretty low on the M1 Garand, and this is kind of like a balancing issue because of the fact that uh, the M1 Garand has major drawbacks to it, including the fact that it has very low ammo per magazine, and um, it's got, it, it, it can't really attach a scope onto it. 
So the overall recoil controllability is quite easy. However, because of the fact that it only comes with eight bullets and uh, the hipfire spread, it might not be the best for close quarters combat. Even though you kind of need to use it at close quarters combat, um, unless you want, unless you're the patient kind of kind of like camper who just stay back and like tries to track people as they move along with their without a scope on. Um, the M1 Garen's recoil controllability is is not the greatest, but it's definitely a lot easier than the Gewehr 43s or the uh, M14s for that matter. It's just that you need to watch out for the fact that you only have 8 rounds per magazine, so you have to make all your shots count. Moving on to the tap fire ability. Tap fire, is, uh, tap fire ability is obviously very high because it is a battle rifle and it doesn't really have the greatest rate of fire. And you can definitely use tap fire to pick off enemies at very long range. In this gameplay, you'll see me later, I, I don't know when I get this, but you'll see me later that I managed to pick off a headshot um, across the uh, the seats in the cafe of the oil, of oil rig. So very nice kind of display of accuracy there and tap fire ability and sprint drawback the sprint drawback on the m1 garand is moderate if not a little bit slower than the rest because it is a battle rifle center speed the m1 garand center speed is um i would say slow because it is a battle rifle but i haven't really i haven't really noticed too many problems with its center speed mostly because of the fact that it is a battle rifle and um i mean i know for a fact that the gewehr 43 and the m14 have relatively slow center speeds but i don't think it's, it's i don't think it's true for the m1 garand because the m1 garand has a faster center speed than the other two battle rifles so just think of it like that Reload speed. The reload speed is probably the fastest amongst assault rifles and combat arms. Literally, when you hit that reload button, your character will do this. Pop out that magazine, slam it on the back end, you're good to go. There you go. That's. It's probably the fastest reloading assault rifle in combat arms. It's just so dang fast. It could be faster than... Um, Swapping, uh, swapping to your secondary is just that fast and I like it how uh, I already mentioned this before but just to re-emphasize re I like it how Nexon uh, made the reload animation of the M1 Garand historically accurate because uh, when you reload the M1 Garand in real life what soldiers had to do was uh, when they popped out the magazine or whenever they needed to reload um, the M1 gear would make this distinctive popping noise and it would basically eject the uh, spent cartridge out and they, the soldiers could put another one back in but at the same time it kind of let people know that uh, their enemies know that they were using M1 gear and they all, the reload sound also uh, to meant that they had to stop to reload and so as the enemies knew when they were reloading so they could just go over and shoot people but anyways um, Moving on to the fire modes, it, it's available in two fire modes, single fire and fully automatic, but you might as well keep it in fully automatic because the spreads always stay the same anyway, and I mean, it's kind of a pain to keep clicking per shot, so you might as well. Moving on to its luck, its luck is very, very low unless you aim for the head. But, and then again, it's not really luck because that's called skill by that point, but anyways. Um, the M1 Garand is not very lucky at all because it is a battle rifle, and of, because of the fact that it has very, very low ammo capacity per magazine. Ammo capacity it has eight rounds in a, mag in a magazine and a very very huge uh, reserve ammo reserve of like nearly a hundred and eight bullets. I oh, I do not understand why Combat Arms gave or Nexon gave the M1 Garand so much am backup ammo, but I guess that's just how they roll. And um, I don't understand why they did that, but I guess that's that's really up to them. Um, I don't know. I have no idea why they gave the M1 Garand so much ammo. Moving on to the uh, key physical characteristic, it looks like a freaking battle rifle. There you go. Um, muzzle noise, it has a very very low muzzle noise. I think I don't know. I forgot. It's it's been I mean it's been like literally ten minutes since I uh, got off from Combat Arms to record this audio commentary, but I already forgot what the M1 Garand sounds like. Gah! But it uh, because it is a battle rifle, um, I would expect that it, the muzzle noise is pretty pretty low. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong, it, I might be wrong as well on that, but. I, in my honest opinion, it would sound pretty low, the M1 Garand, so there you go. Uh, attachment options. The M1 Garand is unique in that you cannot attach a scope, nor can you attach a uh, uh, magazine modification. So you're stuck with 8 rounds, you can't scope in, and basically the only thing you can do is put a silencer on the M1 Garand, which doesn't really make any sense either, because most World War II weapons can't really be silenced, quote unquote, but... Anyways, that's the only attachment that the M1 Garen uh, has available to it, just like the FMG9 Magpul. But if you want to use the suppressor, go ahead. I personally don't want to use a silencer because it reduces your damage, and you you need all the damage you can get. Moving on to the um, the uh, whether or not it's fire team mode, I don't really, really I wouldn't really say so because I mean. It doesn't really have a scope, and also you're going to be constantly reloading. Even though the reload speed is very, very, is extremely fast, 
I mean, I personally don't really want to keep reloading. Like eight shots, bam, 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 bam. Reload, bam, 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 bam. Reload. I don't really keep doing that when I'm when I'm trying to shoot down zombies. So maybe you maybe you can find some use of it in like Desert Thunder, Nemexis, or uh, Desert Fox. But uh, me personally, I don't see it. Uh, quarantine worthy? No, not really either. Because I mean, it's got slow portability. It's got a slow rate of fire, and it's only got eight rounds. So why even bother? So, my frank personal opinion on the M1 Garand is that, um, the M1 Garand is really, really, for whatever reason, uh, suited for close quarters combat. If you can flank people and, or make your shot, all your shots count and hit your targets, the M1 Garand will be the deadliest weapon, or the deadly, deadly, deadliest, the deadliest assault rifle in your hands that you could ever get. But, if you're not the guy with the best aim in the world, or you tr like to spray and pray a lot, and thus you keep missing your shots, the M1 Garand really isn't for you, because, um, I mean, it only got 8 shots, and even though the reload speed is extremely fast, I mean, no matter how fast your reload speed is, people will always find the time to kill you before you can finish your reload, so, the M1 Garand, it's a very, very fun assault rifle, definitely not your, not my, not my go-to assault rifle, but it is still a very fun and quite deadly assault rifle um i should just call it battle rifle i think it's uh, personally speaking i think it's a lot deadlier than the uh Gewehr 43 but that's just my opinion i just feel like because of its much higher damage it takes down people much much more quickly than the Gewehr 43 or the m14 for that matter sorry about that so thanks for watching guys and this will effectively wrap up the m1 garen if you guys haven't checked it out already please do because the m14 it's forged from the m14 basically the only thing that restricts you is either you have no gp because you're poor or you don't have the rep seven rep pals that you need to forge the m1 garen so make sure you do that because the m1 garen is definitely worth checking out if battle rifles aren't your thing then i guess that's fine but if you are into really high damage assault rifles then the m1 garen is definitely something uh for you to check out and definitely worth your time um, putting in uh, like investing into so thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you guys next time Round start